Hello everyone, welcome to a new session on Introduction to Bioinformatics, Origin of Bioinformatics. Introduction of Bioinformatics One of the fundamental principles in biology is that DNA contains genes and codes RNA which produces proteins that regulates all the biological process in every organism. Human body made up of an estimate of 10 raised to 12 cells and 23 pairs of chromosomes in each of them. These chromosomes are carrying a total of 30,000 genes with 3 million pairs of DNA bases. And moreover, our body contains more than 1000 proteins and each of them is assigned of different functions. And moreover, the amount of biological experiments and the outcomes are increasing day by day. For instance, the gene bank repository of nucleic acid sequences contained nearly 152 billion 599 million 230 thousand 112 entries and around 165 million 740 thousand 164 protein sequence entries were reported in July 2013. In an average calculation, the number of these database entries is doubling in every 15 months. According to the EBI updates, another interesting fact is that the complete sequences for more than 200 organisms including archae, bacteria and eukaryota have been published after the release of Haemophilus influenzae genome. There are lots of experiments going on using this information. So, we can imagine the quantity and variety of information that is being produced. It is not possible to handle this large amount of data manually. So, it is indispensable to have computers in this research area to handle with the abundance of data. Here is the origin of bioinformatics. It is nothing but the field of science in which biology, computer science and information technology merges to form a single discipline. It is the emerging field that deals with the application of computers to the collection, organization, analysis, manipulation and presentation and sharing of biological data to solve the problems in biology in a molecular level. According to Frank Tekia, bioinformatics is the mathematical, statistical and computational method that aim to solve biological problems using DNA, amino acid sequence and related information. According to NCBI, bioinformatics is defined as Bioinformatics is the field of science in which biology, computer science and information technology merges to form a single discipline. There are three sub-disciplines within bioinformatics. The development of new algorithms and statistics with which to access relationships among members of large data sets, the analysis and interpretation of various types of data including nucleotide and amino acid sequences, protein domains and protein structures and the development and implementation of tools that enable efficient access and management of different types of information. According to Anthony Kerlavage, recently cited that an experimental laboratory can produce over 100 gigabytes of data a day with ease. So, this excess amount of data can be only handled with the help of bioinformatics methods for accessing and exchanging data with the incredible processing power of computers. In early 1970s, the accumulation of biological information were clearly large and Pauline Hogweg recognized the importance of processing this huge amount of data. Hence, he introduced the name bioinformatics. The studies in the early days of bioinformatics are the formation of complex interaction structures and the evolution process. There were a lot of people who took part to make a stable base for bioinformatics. One important person among them is Dr. Margaret Oakley Dayhoff, who has been introduced by David Lipman and known as the mother and father of bioinformatics. In fact, bioinformatics has been in existence for more than 30 years 
and is now middle aged. History and Origin of Bioinformatics Over 100 years ago, bioinformatics history started with an Austrian monk named Gregor Mendel. He is known as the father of genetics. He cross fertilized different colors of same species of flowers. Mendel maintained a proper record for the colors of cross fertilized flowers and the colors of flowers they produced. He illustrated that the inheritance of traits could be more easily explained if it was controlled by factors passed from generation to generation. In the late 19th century, a German biochemist found the nucleic acids, long chain polymers of nucleotides were made up of sugar, phosphoric acid and several nitrogen containing bases. Later, it was found that the sugar in nucleic acid can be ribose or deoxyribose giving two forms RNA and DNA. In 1943, American Oswald Avery proved that DNA carries genetic information. He even suggested DNA might actually be the gene. Most people at the time thought the gene would be protein not nucleic acid, but by the late 1940s DNA was largely accepted as a genetic molecule. Scientists still need to figure out this molecule structure to be sure and to understand how it worked. In 1948, Linus Pauling discovered that many proteins take the shape of an alpha helix spiraled like a spring coil. In 1950, biochemist Erwin Shargaff found that arrangement of nitrogen bases in DNA varied widely, but the amount of certain bases always occurred in a one to one ratio. These discoveries were an important foundation for the later description of DNA. In the early 1950s at Cambridge University, graduate student Francis Crick and research fellow James Watson had become interested, impressed especially by Pauling's work. Meanwhile, at King's College in London, Morris Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin were also studying DNA. The Cambridge team's approach was to make physical models to narrow down the possibilities and eventually create an accurate picture of the molecule. The King's team took an experimental approach looking particularly at X-ray diffraction images of DNA. In 1951, Watson attended a lecture by Franklin on her work on the DNA structure as it exists in two forms depending on the relative humidity in the surrounding air. Based on this information, Watson and Crick made a failed model. Watson and Crick took a crucial conceptual step suggesting the molecule was made of two chains of nucleotides each in a helix as Franklin had found, but one going up and the other going down. Crick had just learned of Shargaff's findings about base pairs in the summer of 1952. He added that to the model so that matching base pairs interlocked in the middle of the double helix to keep the distance between the chains constant. Watson and Crick showed that each strand of the DNA molecule was a template for the other. During cell division, the two strands separate and on each strand a new other half is built just like the one before. This way DNA can reproduce itself without changing its structure except for occasional errors or mutations. The structure so perfectly fit the experimental data that it was almost immediately accepted. DNA's discovery has been called the most important biological work of the last 100 years. In 1955, Frederick Sanger proved that every protein has a unique sequence and the protein sequence of bovine insulin has been reported by 1956. The construction of bioinformatics or biological databases was started after the discovery of bovine insulin sequence. After a decade, the first nucleic acid sequence of yeast alanine tRNA with 77 bases were reported. After the discovery of protein sequence, Dr. Margaret Oakley Dayhoff started working on protein. Dr. Dayhoff's work with proteins began in 1961 when she developed tools to aid protein chemists in determination of amino acid sequences by automatically overlapping the sequences of peptides. After this discovery, 
bioinformatics and genetics has advanced remarkably in the past 30 years. Needleman Wunsch algorithm was developed in 1970 by Saul B. Needleman and Christian D. Wunsch. It is widely used for protein or nucleotide global alignment in bioinformatics. In 1972, Paul Berg made the first recombinant DNA using ligase. Stanley Cohen, Annie Chang and Herbert Boyer produced the first recombinant DNA organism in the same year. Agarus gel electrophoresis of DNA by Joseph Sambrook and the DNA cloning by Herbert Boyer and Stanley Cohen were the two main events happened on 1973. The DNA sequencing method has been discovered by 1977 and it leads to the formation of GeneTech, the first genetic engineering company. Dr. Margaret Oakley Dayhoff went on to initiate the atlas of protein sequence and structure and to develop many of the tools used today in database design and utilization. In 1980, Dr. Dayhoff developed an online database system that could be accessed by telephone line, the first sequence database available for interrogation by remote computers. Dr. Margaret Oakley Dayhoff, the founder of the field of bioinformatics, died before the field was recognized as a distinct area for investigation. She was indeed a pioneer. In 1981, Temple F. Smith and Michael S. Waterman introduced a new local alignment algorithm to search a part of protein or nucleotide sequence. In 1980s, 579 human genes were mapped through in situ hybridization. The invention of automated DNA sequencing method was another stepping stone for bioinformatics. The organization called HUGO or Human Genome Organization was formed for the scientists who involved in human genome project. In the following year, the first complete genome map of Haemophilus influenzae was published. That was all about the starting of bioinformatics, but the stepping stone of bioinformatics is the genome sequencing. The history of genome sequencing began with Frederick Sanger's invention of sequencing before 25 years ago. This method of determining DNA sequence is known as Sanger sequencing after his brilliant pioneer. This technique involves the separation of fluorescent labeled DNA fragments according to their length on a polyacrylamide gel. The base at the end of each fragment can then be visualized and identified by the dye with which it reacts. The time and labor intensive nature of gel preparation and running as well as the large amount of sample required increase the time and cost of genome sequencing. These conditions drastically reduce the efficiency of sequencing projects ultimately limiting researchers in their sequencing attempts. The first sequenced genome is viral genome bacteriophage FX174 with only 5368 base pairs. Another revolutionary discovery was the invention of shotgun method by Frederick Sanger. This is a strategy based on the isolation of random pieces of DNA from the host genome to be used as primers for the PCR amplification of the entire genome. The amplified portions of DNA are then assembled by the overlapping regions to form contiguous transcripts, otherwise known as contigs. The final step involved the utilization of custom primers to elucidate the gaps between the contigs, thus giving the completely sequenced genome. Sanger first used shotgun sequencing five years later to complete the bacteriophage L sequence that was significantly larger, 48,502 base pairs. This method allowed sequencing projects to proceed at a much faster rate, thus expanding the scope of sequencing. Since then, a couple of other viral and organellar genomes have been sequenced using similar techniques such as the 229 kilo base pair genome of cytomegalovirus, the 192 kilo base pair genome of vaccinia and the 187 kilo base pair mitochondrial and 121 kilo base pair chloroplast genomes of Marcantia polymorpha 
and the 186 kilo base pair genome of smallpox. The success with viral genome sequencing is started from the relatively smaller length of their genetic codes. In 1989, Andre Goffey set up a European consortium to sequence the genome of budding yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Goffey's European collaboration involved 74 different laboratories to the project in hope of sequencing the homologues of their favorite genes. Most laboratories utilized Sanger's shotgun method of sequencing that had become the accepted standard for genome sequencing. Saccharomyces cerevisiae had a sequence approximately 60 times larger than any sequence previously attempted, indicating why Goffu felt compelled to invite the cooperation of a group of laboratories. At the time, the sequencing of model organisms such as Saccharomyces cerevisiae appeared to be the first step towards the eventual characterization of the human genome, a task that seemed beyond the scope of technology due to its tremendous size of 3000 mega base pairs. Sequencing smaller genomes would highlight the problems with sequencing techniques, eventually refining the technology to be used on large scale products like Homo sapiens. The following year 1990 was the most important and the leading movement happened in bioinformatics. It was a joint effort of the Department of Energy and the National Institute of Health called Human Genome Project and was designed as a three step program to produce genetic maps, physical maps and finally complete the nucleotide sequence map of the human chromosomes. The main goal of human genome project is to completely map and sequence all of the genetic material that makes us human. When it is done, we will have a new and profoundly powerful tool to help us to unravel the mysteries of how the human body grows and functions. A team headed by J. Craig Venter from the Institute for Genomic Research TIGR and Nobel laureate Hamilton Smith of John Hopkins University sequenced the 1.8 megabase pair bacterium with new computational methods developed at TIGR's facility in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Previous sequencing projects had been limited by the lack of adequate computational approaches to assemble the large amount of random sequences produced by shotgun sequencing. In conventional sequencing, the genome is broken down laboriously into ordered overlapping segments, each containing up to 40 kb of DNA. These segments are shotgunned into smaller pieces and then sequenced to reconstruct the genome. Venter's team utilized a more comprehensive approach by shotgunning the entire 1.8 megabase pair Haemophilus influenzae genome. Software developed by TIGR called the TIGR assembler used to reassemble approximately 24,000 DNA fragments into the whole genome. Venter's Haemophilus influenzae project had failed to win the funding from the National Institute of Health indicating the serious doubts surrounding his ambitious proposal. It simply was not believed that such an approach could sequence the large 1.8 megabase pair sequence of the bacterium accurately. Venter proved everyone wrong and succeeded in sequencing the genome in 13 months at a cost of 50 cents per base which was half the cost and drastically faster than conventional sequencing. This new method of sequencing led to a multitude of completed sequences over the ensuing years by TIGR. Mycoplasma genitalium, a bacterium that is associated with reproductive tract infections and is renowned for having the shortest genome of all free living organisms was sequenced by TIGR in a period of 8 months between January and August of 1995, an extraordinary example of the efficiency of TIGR's new sequencing method. TIGR subsequently published the first genome sequence of a representative of the archae, Methanococcus janishi, the first genome sequence of a sulfur metabolizing organism, Archaeoglobus fulgidus, the genome sequence of the pathogen 
involved in peptic ulcer disease, helicobacter pylori and the genome sequence of the Lyme disease spirochete Borrelia burgdorferi. At the close of 1997, we are halfway through the time allotted for completing the human genome project projected to finish on September 30, 2005, approximately 50 years after the landmark paper of Watson and Crick. Currently, major groups have sequenced approximately 50 MB of human DNA representing less than 1.5 percent of the whole genome. The estimated finish of the human genome by the year 2000 appears quite optimistic considering that the world's large scale sequencing capacity is approximately 100 MB per year. To complete the genome, the average production must increase to 400 MB per year. Several factors including the slow rate of Sanger sequencing and the high accuracy goals of the human genome project which allows for one error in 10,000 bases limits the ability of researchers to proceed more quickly. Advancements in Sanger sequencing or possible replacements for this time intensive process will be necessary to ensure the human genome project's goal of completion by the year 2005. As of September of 1997, 13 genome sequences of free living organisms had been completed including the two largest E. coli and yeast and 11 other microbial genomes under the length of 4.2 MB. Four other large scale projects are in progress including the sequencing of the nematode C. elegans which is 71 percent completed. The fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster which is 6 percent completed, the mouse which has less than 1 percent finished and the human which is only 1.5 percent completed. These statistics are impressive considering that only 4 years ago no completed sequences existed. The rapid proliferation of biological information in the form of genome sequences has been the major factor in the creation of the field of bioinformatics that focuses on the acquisition, storage, access, analysis, modeling and distribution of the many types of information embedded in DNA sequences. This field will be challenged by the heightening demands of increased information on the algorithms currently utilized for sequence manipulation. The growing sequence knowledge of the human genome has been likened to the establishment of the periodic table in the 19th century. Just as past chemists systematically organized all elements in an array that captured their differences and similarities, the human genome project will allow modern scientists to construct a biological periodic table relating units of nucleotides. The periodic table will not contain 100 elements, but 100,000 genes reflecting not their similarity in electronic configuration, but their evolutionary and functional relationship. Bioinformatics will be the tool of the modern scientist in interpreting this periodic table of biological information. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this session. Bioinformatics plays a real role on different areas like biology, biochemistry, biophysics, molecular biology, biostatistics and computer science. Specially designed algorithms and tools are the core of bioinformatics. In particular, we discussed the history of bioinformatics. Bioinformatics has become an unavoidable area of research after the completion of human genome project. Human Genome Project is an excellent example for the importance of bioinformatics. It would be impossible without bioinformatics since it requires sequencing and storing of 3 billion nucleotides. If the human genome was to be analyzed by human brain, it would have taken generations to complete it. With the help of advanced bioinformatics, it will be possible to sequence DNA of individual patient and it will help physicians to find and treat the disease easily. Bioinformatics plays an important and unavoidable role in the field of research and it will be the tool to figure out all the hidden facts in biology. 
Here are a few questions for you to work out. 1. Write down the definition of bioinformatics. 2. Find out the method of Sanger sequencing. 3. What are the goals of Human Genome Project? 4. Find out some important applications of bioinformatics. 5. Try to figure out the importance of bioinformatics in the area of cancer research. Here are a few books for your reference. Bioinformatics, a practical guide to the analysis of genes and proteins by Andreas D. Baxivanis, B. F. Francis Ouellette, Volume 43, Second Edition, 2001, John Willey and Sons, Incorporated. Essential Bioinformatics by Jin Sinong, First Edition, Cambridge University Press, 2006. Introduction to Bioinformatics by Anna Tramontano, First Edition, Taylor and Francis Incorporated, Chapman and Hall, CRC, 2006. Fundamental Concepts of Bioinformatics by Dan E. Crane, Michael L. Raymer, First Edition, Benjamin Cummings, 2002. Introduction to Bioinformatics, A Theoretical and Practical Approach by Stephen A. Krovitz, David D. Womble, Second Edition, 2003, Humana Press. Bioinformatics for Dummies by Jean Michael Clavery, Cedric Notre Dame, Second Edition, John Willie and Sons, 2006. Here are a few websites for your reference www.sanger.ac.uk slash www.genome.gov. Thank you for watching this session. Let's meet in the next session with another topic. Till then, bye.